man. All right, folks, what's up? Welcome to another week of the Live Life Aggressively show. Mike trying to change his career over here being a funny man. Like <laughs> well, we know, we know that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, folks, welcome to another week. Uh, Sincere Hogan, and uh, that's the funny man over there. That's Mike Mahler. What's up, man? I'm doing good, man. we got a good friend of ours. We're going to talk to him a little bit. He's got some interesting training stuff. Oh, yeah, and then, I mean, maybe, maybe he does. I'm not sure why we have him on, but we'll talk to him about it. I mean, he has a new book out. I'm not sure why we're supposed to give a fuck about it, but maybe he'll, maybe he'll enlighten us on that. But before we get to him, we've got a lot of great listeners that are doing their part to support the show. They're buying products and services using that coupon code LLA to get – 10% off the best nutrition supplements money can buy. So we got Joel Salazar, Steve Arndt, Lane Waldy, Eric Ibsen Nawak, Nick Button, Mike Perez, Donald Motley, Casey Gardner, Bella Toth, Tom Asher, David Wallace, Jeffrey Wilson, David Leddick. <laughs> David, okay. David's Sorry, a friend of mine. <laughs> Sorry, David. It, we always it, it make was... part of David. We always make part of David Leddick, but I, I, whatever I was like, David's been using aggressive strength for a while, so now even he refers to himself as Led Dick. And you can email him to find out why. Michael Corrales. Oh, Michael oh, motherfucking Corrales. We all know you don't like cussing, so we got to throw that in there. And then uh, William McQueen. You know, We've decided that we're no longer going to rip on people who don't support the show because that's time we could allocate to giving people props like these people. Exactly. And uh, how about at Patreon or anything with you, man? Uh, Patreon, we still got to say, hey, here's the thing about Patreon I love, man. One thing that's beautiful about that, you got people steady upping their pledges each month, and no one's dropping off. So that goes to show that there's something about the show that people keep coming back for more. So there you go. So for those who keep coming back for more and you're not joining us, joining on Patreon, step it up. Do that. Because these folks are doing the same thing, man. So that's, that's one thing I like. Because a lot of times when you see people do these monthly subscriptions or they do like a monthly support or something like that, they tend to be like some overhead. It's some turnover or something like that. But no, not at all, man. Since we've been doing Patreon, let's say, I think we started back in January. Here we are, man. We just rolled into September. And it's been growing every month. There is no declines going on with that. And that's what I like about that, man. So just head over to patreon.com slash LLA podcast and become a monthly supporter. Start off with $5 or go higher than that. You know what? I always say, you know, take that one and add a zero behind it. Look, man, if you want to be, if you want to just be a little odd, because yeah, I'm with the oddities, man. I was one of those guys in high school. I was the odd one out. You don't necessarily you still a, are. That's right. Nothing's <laughs> changing. I like being an oddity. You know, so you don't necessarily have to put a zero behind that one. You can put a seven. You can put a three. You can put something like that. So guess what? It all adds up, folks. So there you go right there. Again, patreon.com slash LLA podcast. Be a monthly supporter of the show to help us keep it free. When I say free, free of bullshit advertisements. So we won't be having you subscribing for the Panty of the Month Club or something like that or the, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Condom of the Month Club or something like that. Cause first of all, that's, that's, that's being very, I don't know, wishful when you sit there, you gotta get a new condom every month. Or it's kind of sad when you just get one a month. I don't know. Yeah, we're, we're not going to have a bunch of advertisers where we're plugging products we don't even use, like everyone else who has advertisers on their podcast. They're not using any of those fucking yeah, I'm products. I'm a married man. I won't be using the, the condom of the month club. I'm telling you that right now. I'm optimized now because I use on it. Get over and get some alpha break. You're not using that shit. Give me a fucking break, man. Give me a fucking break. Come over to your house right now. There won't be any open product. You'll have product there. It's not going to be open because even you know it's not worth using for free. <laughs> you know? It's so funny you said that. I was, oh, man, oh, I was coming out of a store yesterday, man, and there's this guy just kind of looking me up and down because uh, I had a I had a 762 by 39 T-shirt on, which is the caliber they use for an AK-47. Yeah. So he's looking uh -huh. at that, and guess what T-shirt he was wearing? <laughs> he had an on it t-shirt on so i'm like you know there's no was comment. it one of the green ones no, it, was <laughs> one. it was a black one so he's kind of looking at me i looked at him like nope we don't have a conversation buddy just keep on walking <laughs> we can talk about here. i'm optimized trust me i use my 762 by 39s on a, on a weekly basis brother <laughs> so you know, and also the other thing about patreon is we're actually using all of that money and donating to our friend jace to help him battle cancer exactly. so if that doesn't get you motivated to be a little selfless and support him then don't listen to the fucking show just go build a fucking ant farm whatever the fuck else you feel like doing put a dunce cap on go in a corner whatever idiots do but don't listen to the show you don't deserve it or you can go on and debate on social media that's what you're I mean, <laughs> yeah go, go talk too. about how pissed you off you are offended by what i just said so that's give us subtraction oh, <laughs> you know? oh. mike Mahler's a fucking asshole i've been listening to the show since the beginning and he told me to go build an ant farm you know? <laughs> 
<laughs> it's like, no, I said, go build an amp farm if you don't support the show. There's people that I've been listening to in the beginning that have been buying product. Hell, there's people that have been with me since the first five months of my career who are still supporting me, buying products, listening to the show, etc. Hey, so anyway, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, go ahead, buddy. No, I was just about to say on that note, man, and Mitzak, I tell you that, again, someone's been with us from the beginning. I think she's pretty much bought every product that I have. <laughs> and, she, and she's a monthly supporter, and she's upped her pledge each month. So I had to give a shout-out to her, man. I mean, you know, I go back and I look at the emails when I pull her name up. I'm seeing she's been buying stuff since, like, when the DVD first came out. So, yeah, man, again, and you, that, you listen. And that, that, was, your that, was, that was before you grew gray hair. So you exactly. That's when I was slimmer and doing kettlebell sport and, you know, was looking a little, <laughs> looking a little hungry on the side and <laughs> when a vegetarian diet wasn't working very well for me. So she was, she, she bought it to that guy before this guy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's when there were five pizzas in the room, and all you could think about was finishing. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's eating pizzas while you're while you're talking. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Speaking oh, man. of being optimized, again, our, our good friend Nate Morrison's back on the show, and he, he's I've been good friends with Nate since 2002. We actually went through the RKC together. It was the second one ever, and then we stayed connected. We were senior RKCs together, and in the John Duquesne Mafia for many years, and then we both wised up and went on our own ways and never been better. But he has a new book out that everybody's raving about. We've had a lot of our listeners email us and say, man, you got to get Nate back on. His book is awesome. And I was like, great. I wish I could say I read it, but I haven't, so I'm not going to lie and say it's great. Yeah, yeah. Now, we can talk but about maybe, why that is. Maybe I'll be motivated to read it after this conversation. Yeah, we can talk about why that is, Nate. What? <laughs> I'm over here. i got to mute my microphone every three seconds here. I'm dying. This is great. Good to have you back on, man. How are you doing? Oh, not too bad. Not too bad. It's it's great to be back on with you guys, and uh, you know we, we got to just get on the phone a little bit more often, man. I, I miss you guys. Getting Mike on the phone? Good luck so, with that. Well, <laughs> uh, I'll send him a message. He goes, who's this? Mike, dude, really? Hey, no, Nate is actually one of, the, Nate's one of the few guys. Nate's one of the few guys I like talking to on the phone. But what's, what, what I don't appreciate is so-called friends of ours where oh, boy. You, you, call, you call them up, and then they text you back about why they can't call you back. It's like, fuck off, man. Don't fucking act like your time is so valuable. Right. Like, what the don't, hell are don't you text, doing? Don't text me back. It's like, I'm... Five times more successful than you are, and you're texting me back. Please. You're very valuable to me, but just not that. But valuable. I'm over in negotiating between Russia and Croatia right now, and I'll get back to you. <laughs> you know, Steve Harvey made a good point of saying that because someone asked him on his show, they go, you know, how do you how do you stay in touch with all your friends? And he's like, look, man, it's like if I haven't talked to you in the last three months, then you're not that important to me. <laughs> you know, yeah. so it's like, don't call me up, don't text me. The people that are important, we're going to stay in touch. But I look at it from the from the opposite perspective. If you don't if you don't get in touch with me, you know, in three months or so, I mean, then apparently I'm not very important to you. So you know, I'm not going to waste my time on you. No, that's true. And yeah. I give people some leeway too, right? Because we all get yeah. busy in life. A lot of times you're just busy doing your thing, and it's not that you don't care about other people. It's just that you're focused on that. And then you hear from yeah. someone, you're like, oh, cool. I haven't thought about him or her in a while. Let me call them up. Right, exactly. So, and, so I give people a little bit of leeway. Unless you're yeah. that dick that always reaches out when you need something, and you know who you are. <laughs> and every three months, oh, like, hey, man. man, we need to get on the phone. What the fuck do you want, man? You know, <laughs> I, I know you want something. I know you want something. Cause Ice-T time- has a good point about that. <laughs> Ice-T talks about how. You know, like, he's like, you know, people coming to me trying to pitch me on something, they're not doing it for my benefit. Exactly. You know, yeah. it's, all, it's all about them. They're not doing it because it's going to help me. They're, they're, right. That's not the way they're thinking about it anyway. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, true words there, man. Absolutely. So what's what's going on with this new book, man? Well, oh, gosh. I See, I, I, here I thought we were going to, like, talk about uh, all kinds of other stuff. And cause every time we talk, you're like, yeah, I'm I sure we will. <laughs> whatever, whatever you sent me, I, I didn't even look at that. I'm like, I know. I, I don't even know why I sent it to you. <laughs> whatever I sent yeah. <laughs> oh, <that book. laughs> oh, I, I forgot you that sent you sent me something. Me something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that email. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think I, I, think I double deleted it, man. I mean, the last time you <laughs> right. sent me something, it was a fully nude pic, man. <laughs> I couldn't get that image out of my mind for a long time. I couldn't, it was a new I couldn't finger, unsee that, man. New phone. <laughs> you know what's I funny, guy? You know, those on Twitter, there's some guy, I don't know who it is, but he basically yeah. said, he goes, why is it when girls send each other naked pics, it's cute, but if I send a, I, if I, but if I send one of my male friends a picture of my dick, it's gay. <laughs> I was like, you know, you know what? Dick, man. Nobody wants to see balls. <laughs> no one wants to see that, man. Come on. 
<laughs> gay, yeah, guys yeah, yeah. Aren't, gay guys aren't even sending out each other pictures. <laughs> okay, you know? No, they're sending pictures, no, of their, they're sending pictures of their abs. You know you they always stop right there. They even they know, like, come on, man. Nobody wants to see that. Yeah, okay, exactly. it's, not, it's, not, it's not a good look. It's like the, yeah. the, only, per, I mean, the, the only person that will tolerate it is the woman in, in, in your life, and that's because she's your woman. Before she was your woman, if you sent her that pic, she'd be like, ugh. Like everybody else. Like, oh. That's a nine one one call right there. No oh, way. No, it's uh, no man. I, I, you know me. I, 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 I'm always trying to answer questions that uh, that demand answers or uh, question or, or answer the questions no one else wants to ask. Like you know, why are we uh, like why are we why are we calling uh, everything that you do that's you know walking or or cyclic in nature, running, whatever. You know, why do we call that uh, aerobic when it's all uh, anaerobic threshold and, and mm. that type of stuff? And so, um, you know, I've just been breaking down the walls on all of the BS that's out there, um, you know, because, I mean, look, it, the, this fitness industry, it, it's a thing that's got, what, maybe a 5% success rate. And, <laughs> oh, you're uh, being generous, yeah. man. Generous. <laughs> I know. I know, <laughs> right? I mean, that it really is. <laughs> So I mean, would you buy a car or a computer? Well, uh, actually, when you when you say five percent success, you mean someone's business, or you mean the actual programs? I, program? I mean the actual program. Okay. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it, it, everything that I've seen statistically says that that's that's your success rate. You know, about five to seven percent. And and like uh, sincere said, I mean, I think that's probably being generous. And um, so when you when you really start looking into why that is, there's all this body of science that that says, you know, hey, yeah, there's there's you know, for example, with cardiovascular or aerobic exercise, the following adaptations and benefits happen. And so people say, all right, here's the latest cardio program. Go destroy yourself. And, and like, wait a minute. This is, but that's anaerobic threshold. You know, you didn't give a heart rate to go with that. So what the hell are you doing? You know, no one knows what the hell they're doing, you know. So I've just been breaking down the the, the walls on that and, and, you know, calling a spade a spade and, and saying, look, if you're going to do this right, you know, if you're going to actually be successful, you have to do it the way it's supposed to be done. And by the way, 99 percent of the folks out there aren't telling you how it's supposed to be done because they don't know. So that's that's the thing that keeps me up at night and what I end up writing about in the end. Yeah, I think a lot of times I mean, I think there's I think it's a multifaceted problem. Right. On, on one hand, there are good programs, but people don't follow them properly. Yep. Meaning they modify everything and then they go, oh, that didn't work for me. And then they okay. don't take care of the other half of training, which is restoration. You don't get yeah. stronger while you're working out. You get stronger when you're recovering. Right. And very few people understand the importance of that. Oftentimes it's diminished to the point where people think, oh, that's you just you just got to be tougher, man. You just got to deal with the soreness. You just got to deal with the pain. That's just part of the game. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and with your research on the on the hormone stuff as well, I mean, you know, as well as as anyone that, you know, for example, the fact that all you have all of these pre-workout products that people are taking that are <laughs> filled with stimulants. Right. This is th they take it with, you know, a, a, a spike from Biotest or or Monster or something like that. Right. And, and so, I mean, if if you take your your central nervous system and you crank it up to that level, I mean, you're not doing good work, and you're never coming down from that. Right, you know? right. No, it's just, it's, you're just you're just digging a bigger deficit. I mean, you're taking yeah. that because you're in a deficit state. That's why you feel like you need to take it, yeah. and then you're creating a bigger debt yep. after you take that. I, I hate the whole category of pre-workout. Oh, I just it, hate it. Yeah. And then a lot of it's times just, they're taking it, and they don't even realize they need to take it. They just hear it. And it sounds good. Someone, yeah. some, somebody gave me some bro science in the gym, like, dude, you need to be taking this, bro. You need to be doing this before you work out, bro. <laughs> and especially if they're new to all this. So they're thinking, right, like, yeah. well, damn, I don't want to, you know, start off that far behind. So let me, <laughs> yeah. this guy, he looks pretty fit. Like he's been doing this for a while. So hell, if he says I need to take these pre workouts and all this other stuff, then I should get on that stuff, man. I should do it. And then yep. next thing you know, it's like, well, first of all, why did you, the best thing you could have done is just show up at the gym. You didn't have to take any yeah. pre-workout. Just, just you getting to your workout was your pre-workout. Just you driving over there, especially when you've been sitting on your ass for the last five, 10, 20 years. <laughs> you know, your yeah. pre-workout is actually getting in your car and driving on the road to get there and telling yourself yeah. not to turn back around as soon as you get in the traffic because it's really yeah. easy at that point. Or when you can't find a parking spot by the door at 24 hour fitness <laughs> and you're circling around for 20 minutes, you know, that's your pre-workout right there, buddy. So it's that's more right. of a, it's more of a mental game for them, for people just starting off. But again, they're getting yeah. fed all this BS from all the, like I said, the bro science. And, you know, some some guy that's all like, yeah, man, he's walking around with spaghetti strap T-shirts on or whatever, trying to give you <laughs> advice. So that, that's, that's wait, you saw thing. me. Well, doing I think that? that thing the key also is that you want to look at being optimal all the time. 
So yeah. what can you do to optimize your endocrinology where you feel great all the time? You don't need a pre-workout drink. That's you just right. wake up. You can't yeah. wait to go to the gym. Yeah. You're energetic yeah. after going to the gym. You're energetic right. to take charge of your life to be a better contributor to your community, et cetera. You just, you just feel great all the time. That's the goal that you should have rather than I feel like crap all the time. So let me take a stimulant for a false sense of energy. Yep. Basically, you're just poisoning your mind. So you're all jacked up and then you go get a workout where you're creating an, an even bigger deficit. So now you're going to feel even more tired than you would if you didn't take it. And yep. it's going to be harder to keep going down that road. Eventually you crash hard. Yeah. You know, eventually, you wear out your adrenals to the point where you have no energy at all. You don't have any energy to get out of bed. You're depressed all the time. Yep. You feel like crap. And why are you putting all so your eggs in one slow. basket? Why are putting all your eggs in one? Why is it the highlight of your day is when you go to the gym? Well, you know, what, what about the other 23 or some yeah. of you 21 or 22? Because sometimes you spend, these people talk about they spend two hours in the gym, which I don't understand. Why is right. that the highlight of your day? Like, why is that what, what motivates you to get going? Like, the rest of your day is crap. You're like, oh, man, I can't wait to get to the gym and work out today. And, you know, it's some days you're going to feel like that. But there's some people, that's every day for them. And right. oftentimes yeah. we talk about with guys, you know, one of the key, one of the key indicators for, like, good hormone optimization is, Certain things that you see when you first wake up in the morning. Let me tell you, man, when I wake up and I look and I look down, I see someone else is waking up with me, you know, attached to my body when it's standing up mm -hmm. at attention. That's a motivator <laughs> right there. Like, wow, another another day I got a free Woody. OK, yep. you know, I didn't have to take a pill, no blue pills, none of that. Hell, I'm by myself at the moment when I woke up. I didn't have to have like my wife nearby to stimulate me. It just did it. OK, that right yep. there, that gets me going for the day. Like because there's a lot of guys waking up who don't have that that gift. OK, and this oh, yeah. guy's waking up like, OK, I need to get to the gym because that's the only time I'm going to really feel like a man because I can't get this thing. <laughs> this thing won't get up. She won't talk to me. She won't give me any sex. You know, at least I got my workout, you know, later on today. So that's the thing right. about it, man. So I think that's a good indicator right there for a lot of fellows out there. If, you know, when you wake up in the morning, take a look down at your boy down there. OK, and if he's not looking back at you, get some things fixed. You Don't worry about your pre-workout. OK, that's yeah. when you probably need to hit Mike up and like, hey, man, I need to go ahead and get one of those Mahler <laughs> bundles, man, and uh, hit me up with that <laughs> testosterone booster and probably the EC. Because if you if you can't see your dude from looking over your bitch tits, then, yeah, go ahead and grab some EC. You know, you know, you know, what's funny <laughs> is how many testimonials I get where guys are so proud of having daily erections now from taking yeah. testosterone, <laughs> the testosterone booster, EC, recovery. Hey, all they're like, they're like, man, I every day I wake up at this and that. I'm like, cool, man. You mind if I use that testimonial on my website? They're like, well, can I modify a few things? And of course, they take that part out. <laughs> hey, man, you don't know what you have until it's gone, man. <laughs> Think about it. Like, oh, no, because sex, sex drive is such a it's, – it's very important for well-being for both men and women, but it's even more prominent in men. If you don't, I always say if you don't have a healthy sex drive, you can't possibly feel at your best. It, it just goes hand in hand. And the Think and Grow Rich, one of my favorite books, has a whole chapter on how every successful man in the history of, of man had a high sex drive. It just went down the line. Now, for a lot of people, it can be the, the path of ruin because they put all that sexual energy into self-destructive habits. Right, right. Yep. So that's not what we're recommending here. But what we're recommending is that you optimize your hormonal profile because it's going to improve every facet of your life, not just your training, your personal life your business life, every facet of your life will be affected by it. A lot of marriages, in my opinion, I mean, a lot of marriages should fall apart. So I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing, but a lot of times they fall apart because you have two people who just got unhealthier and unhealthier and unhealthier, and then they just drifted apart. Yeah. yeah they lost the Definitely. spark. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, and that's, that's, you know, there's two things to that, Mike, that, um, that I've, I've been addressing with a lot of people recently is, you know, one of those things, or I guess both what, what uh, you, Mike, and Sincere said is, you know, right when you get up in the morning, I mean, right after, right after you do a package check on yourself, you shouldn't have to do a package check. You should know you should it's there, you know, <laughs> like you got to, yeah, you got to handle something before you get out of bed and go into public, you know, that, that should happen, obviously. But, you know, the next thing is, I mean, at, at what point, because I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of work with, um, um, heart rate variability and stress and, and uh, a good bit with uh, hormonal profiles and all that. And, you know, one of the really interesting things that we find is that uh, with a lot of people, if you can get them to use a device that will tell you what their heart rate variability is and resting heart rate before they wake up, you get a little bit more accurate uh, uh, snapshot of what their 
what their actual potential is because the minute they wake up, the instant they wake up, they're so stressed out just because, oh my God, this person's sleeping next to me. We're going to get in a fight. We're going to, ah, you know, and I mean, <laughs> you can't, you, you sit there and you go, why, why is your resting heart rate not ever come down? Why is your HRV always completely sporadic in the morning? You yeah, look at, yeah. at the, the overnight, uh, and, and you get that better picture and you go, okay, well now, Seriously, you need to make some lifestyle changes here. You know, something there is is a big problem. Yeah, there's not too much that's more stressful than just being with someone you don't want to be oh with. It's gosh. like a 24-7 yep. cortisol drip. It's like just yep. the sight of that person instantly. Yep. just thinking about you. it. If someone mentions their name and your eyes roll to the top of your head and you just all of a sudden you find yourself oh. breathing hard like, oh. basically yep. it's that, oh, this motherfucker. I think the real, I think the real, a, a real indicator too is like my good, our good friend actually, Christos Dimitris. He said that when, when you're constantly talking to each other via sarcasm, that's yeah, a real that's, that's bad good, sign, man. man. Yeah. yeah. It's like, hey, I'm gonna go do this. Well, why are you gonna go do that? What do you think is gonna happen? I'm gonna oh, get a workout like, in. Oh, I'm just, sure you're gonna have a great one. You know, like, uh, like, like you need, like you should work out a little bit more often, buddy. Right. <laughs> and they're cracking jokes to their friends on the side. Like, yeah, wait, yeah, what, yeah, you, yeah, what did yeah. you just say? <laughs> right. Oh, now he can't well, hear very well. Oh, what else is not working I, on your I, body? I always say sarcasm. <laughs> you know what's funny is, is in just about every religion, you would come across. People recommending that you avoid sarcasm <laughs> because right. they, they just said you think you're being funny and all that, but in a lot of ways you're just being passive aggressive. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You, it's right just, you're just you just don't have the balls to say what you want to say in a direct way, so you're doing it in this sarcastic way, so that if it backfires, you can always say, "Oh, I was, I was just, just kidding. joking. Uh, come on, yeah. man, lighten up." <laughs> <laughs> right. But everyone knows that you're not. Exactly. Right. And it just right. you know perpetuates the cycle and everything else. And I mean. Yeah, I mean, pay attention. I mean, does does your heart rate jump up? Does your breath rate jump up? Do you get a little tense? You know, I mean, that shouldn't be happening. The, the person in your life should be an asset. You know, they should be saying, you know, hey, wait a minute, you haven't worked out today. Get out. Beat it. Go work out right now, you know, or or whatever it is that you do or that you love instead of always trying to, to hold you down, tie you down. You know, I'm, I'm going to go to the store what, alone without me. Oh, yeah, <laughs> alone without you. <laughs> Jesus oh, Christ. I, I knew a guy couldn't even get a haircut without his wife coming with him. I was like, Are you damn. Sure? Oh, man. He was always <laughs> talking about how she she was codependent, and then she was always complaining about how he was codependent, and neither one of them knew what each other was saying. <laughs> it was hilarious, man. Um, he's like, man, I just can't I just can't get rid of her. And I was like, yeah, right. She told me you can't even get a haircut without her coming along. What are you talking right. about? Right. Well, maybe, maybe if you guys talked a little bit more, talked more honestly, right. you would know, you know, I mean, people need their space and they need a lot that's, more that's a little, than you think they do. Exactly. You know, come on, you didn't come on. You didn't come in here as a couple. Like, trust me, you came in here alone. It's OK. That's my long time. Even twins don't come in, come out at the same time. You know, right. even one goes, hey, go, <laughs> hey, go out there. Let me know how it is before I come out there, man. You know, right. Even they, right, yeah. even they can give each other some space. Like, come you, on. You want to you give yourself some space to miss each other. Exactly. Someone, yeah. someone takes off for a couple of weeks. That's a good thing. Or, yeah, know, damn right it or is. Or do like my yeah. wife, you know, take trips to Africa and they'll take a month, couple of months off. <laughs> you know, right. just like, and, people right. like, and people are asking like, well, sincere, you know, what are you going to do while she's gone? Shit, a lot of stuff, like things I usually do when she's here because right. we give each other space even when she's here. So I'm like, yeah. we don't sit there. We, we, we've, we've been in relationships where we've had people <laughs> under us all the freaking time. We've been right. there and we didn't want that with this relationship. Trust me. Yeah. Once you've had well, that all, in your life, you don't want to go back. Sincere gets a call from Kenya. I'm not coming back. I'm with Makunta now. You know? oh I'm like, God. man, I thought you were only going to be gone for three months. It's been six. <laughs> she's oh, like, no, she's like, you know what? Now that I've hung out with these Maasai for a while, I realized that I don't need all that material oh, crap. I'm on the YouTube. She's jumping up and down with the Maasai tribe and everything. Back. <laughs> Like, geez. I just realized there's so much I don't need, including you know? <laughs> <laughs> on top of that, Liz is you. you know? <laughs> oh man, no, but people. I, I think it's not even just people that are are codependent. People are stimulus addicts. They're always distracting themselves. Yes, and I see this. I've seen this with close family members where you're just constantly distracting yourself. If you're not watching TV, you're playing the stock market. If you're not doing that, you're, you're doing one of your other hobbies. And you're never taking any time for introspection. Yeah. Because a lot of times people don't want to go do something called the float tank, right? Mm -hmm. I learned about this from Joe Rogan. We've talked about it on the show. And a lot of people don't want to do it because they're like, well, what are you doing there? I go, that's the whole point. You don't do anything in there. It's sensory deprivation tank. You don't see anything. You can't hear anything. You're in there naked. <laughs> the water is the same temperature as your skin temperature, so eventually you don't even feel that. And uh, you just have an hour where all you have 
are your thoughts. Yeah, but those and that's what right you there, need. They don't want those conversations, man. <laughs> that's the thing about it. When you sit in there, it's just the voices in your head, and you got to deal with them. Finally, it's like you know, really, a lot of people don't want to deal with that. That's why it's so hard for so many people. When you say meditation, their eyes roll on the top of their head. They're like, oh, I can't meditate. Oh man, that's too hard. Really, it's too hard just to shut the hell up, sit still, and just do nothing. Nah, man, there's no way I can do that. There's no way I can do that. You know, it's like, I, think, I think meditation is really anything that allows you to be fully exactly. present. Exactly, that's moment, my thing. Right? So, like my man. father, he he's a big fly fisherman, so that allows him. That's his yeah. meditation. You know, someone like my brother loves just mm-hmm. editing stuff for his movie. That's his meditation because he's fully in the moment. He's not thinking about anything else. Yeah. You know, when I'm working out, I'm in the moment. I'm yeah. not checking my email in between sets. You know, I'm not do, doing a heavy. I'm not doing a heavy deadlift and going, huh? Wonder what I'm going to do after this is over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're just fully in the moment. You go people, hiking. Text in between moment. sets. Every time. Oh, let me. Text Nate really quick, you know, before I start. Well, this no, next there, was, <laughs> there was one chick at the gym who was fucking reading a book in between sets. Uh, it's like the most that, annoying that's thing. That's what ever. the toilet is made for. What are you doing, woman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's like, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure you're really pushing it hard. Nothing like a good book. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> you know, let's talk about pretty much the the reason that you wrote this book and oh. and think where things have changed since the last time we spoke when we had it on the show a couple of years ago. Yeah, well, yeah, shoot, it was a couple of years ago that, that, uh, we were on and, and actually, you know, it's funny because at the time I was working on, uh, on a book and a program that I was calling combat conditioning. Mm-hmm. And that was, it was basically what I had come up with to address how the heck do you train a lot of people from a long distance away? Because in my experience, the, you know, there are so many things that go wrong in trying to train someone remotely. Um, you know, because you can't see that person, you can't see their form, you can't see their technique, you can't, there's all this stuff that really necessitates one-on-one training. And that just isn't really going to fly because it's only one of me or, or a certain number of people that I've trained and so on and so forth. And, you know, I mean, I only ever recommend guys that are trained by, you know, Mike or Steve Cotter or you, or, you know, there's, you know, on one hand, the number of people I can recommend is, you know, hey, if you if the, if your coach or trainer has been trained by this guy, they should be OK, you know, because otherwise I, I have no idea who you're sending people to, you know. Right. Um, so that was that was my response. And, and, and you know, the short version is, is that I had I, I went into medicine. Um, I, I dug into science and I said, OK, there's commonalities. Exercise physiology is technically the same thing as medical physiology because we're human beings. And this huge thing exploded and um, turned into something really epic. Uh, we launched it, and and I mean, guys have been uh, – it, it's just crazy the level of performance these guys are able to to achieve. And I just keep refining that and refining that into what I'm calling now the, the Riker system because uh, the, the name of my company is Riker uh, or Riker Performance. And um, it, it, it's one of those things where we've we've now taken it – all the way into the the true athletic world and figured out how to take everything that makes the athletic world everything that it is and the and the high levels of performance that it is and taken that back simplified it and dumbed it down so that we can use all of that on um you know your guy that's starting from zero or the soccer mom or whatever and work them in a linear fashion up to a very high level of performance in say anywhere from six months to two years and, um, I, I mean, we literally have guys now that, uh, are easily able to attain the NCAA division one standards for football in strength, but then they're rocking out with the endurance levels of guys that are running marathons and, and triathlons. So it's pretty awesome because you really can get bigger, faster, stronger with more stamina, uh, all at the same time. Uh, it's, it's everything that people that, um, you know, subscribe to things that start with cross, say they do and fail miserably at. Because well, how, how do you how do you break this down? Like what's an example yeah. of a program yeah. that that, sh- that sh- would show listeners how to do this? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, real quick, what what I did was I, I, I broke things down into the commonalities of uh, uh, of what it is that human beings do, which, by the way, line up with energy systems. So. You have, for example, uh, loaded and unloaded cyclic anaerobic work. Now, that's just sprinting, but it's with a load or on a hill if it's loaded. It's um, unloaded if you're just on flat ground on a track, okay, because the energy demands and the energy pathways are different. The adaptation is different. 
you have uh, acyclic anaerobic, which is uh, strength training. So um, uh, max max strength, power, hypertrophy, muscular endurance is the four rough categories that I use. Then uh, for the lactate or glycolytic uh, energy system, that's another cyclic area that you can do either loaded or unloaded. So this is running very fast. This is what most people prescribe as cardio. It's actually uh, anaerobic threshold or lactate dominant, and that's not aerobic work. So you're getting the benefits of lactate, but the problem is if, if you train in the lactate zone too much, you decrease the anaerobic capacity and the aerobic capacity, and you don't want that, but that's what most people are doing. Then you've got um, your loaded and unloaded aerobic. So I know that sounds a little confusing. Let me clear it up. So five days a week, I want you walking, jogging, running, but I want you in a specific heart rate zone, specifically 60 to 70% of Carvanin max training heart rate. That's where I want you. I don't care if you're walking, jogging, walking and jogging intermittently or running. That's what you do. That builds the aerobic system. Um, then I want you lifting three times a week in the beginning. After about a year or so, I generally let folks gr uh, graduate up to five or six days a week. But just three days a week of strength training, pick a focus, whether it's power, max strength, hypertrophy or muscular endurance. And there are specific variables that you use for that. And then you are required to sprint once a week. And that's the basic program. That's it. If you just start doing that, what you start doing is you start building the pyramid the way that it's <clears throat> supposed to be. So you'll have that huge aerobic capacity that starts to build. That supports your recovery. That supports your health. It supports uh, metabolic efficiency, everything that you need. You're getting how would how would you work Fran into this? Uh you would. <laughs> <laughs> only go only go shooting competitions, uh, mate. Big bingo. <laughs> right, right. You absolutely yeah. wouldn't. No, um, no. As I, as I listen to what you're saying, it's 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 a very sensible program. Yeah. Focusing on basic parameters, and I think where a lot of people are going to yeah, be like, listening, a lot of listening listeners are going to be very incredulous, going, "That's well, it? That's it?" I mean, yep. there's got to be more. It can't be that simple, <laughs> Nate. Come on, man. It it really is, and it's and you know, but here's the thing: is that it it gets uh it, it gets progressively more difficult the higher your skill level goes. So, for example, most people, and especially guys that are uh, lactate dominant all the time, so especially your CrossFit guys, <laughs> they lose their minds because they say, "Well, to to keep that heart rate, then you know, I I have to walk." So yeah, you're that out of shape aerobically, dude. But see, all of this stuff is common knowledge in the triathlon and marathon and swimming communities. I mean, real athletics, this is common knowledge. It's people going, are, are you kidding? How do you not know this? But this is where you have to draw that distinction between the general fitness community just does stuff because they're chase, it's just a collection of tools. They're, right. It's like I have a wrench and a hammer and I just, I hit this and I turn this and rah, 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 rah. And you don't ever go anywhere, you right. know? The people that actually are competitive athletes train in this manner, every single one of them. Yeah, uh, what you're talking about is you're talking about how you can achieve different things within a program, but you're not doing those things at the same time. So in other words, you're right. not you're not doing a heavy set of deadlifts and then going jogging in between sets. Right, right. You're not doing right. sprinting and then doing heavy military presence in between each set. Yep. And that's something that I've always liked with my own program designs. Like when I go sprinting, that's it. I'm going sprinting. When mm -hmm. I lift heavy weights, I'm lifting heavy weights. I'm not trying to work on my endurance or cardio. Yeah. And if I go for a long walk, I'm not doing push-ups every 10 feet. Right. To work on gonna, something. But then you're going to hear from folks. I don't have time to do all that, though. I, I try to get it all in at one time because, you know, they're so busy in the world. Well, what the fuck do you have time to do? <laughs> you know, right. you know people, like, the average man, American I'm... watches four hours. <laughs> you, you ever talk to someone who always talks about how they don't have time? I'm and then so busy. every time you name off a TV show, they know what you're talking about? They're like, yeah. oh, yeah, I've seen every episode of that. It's like, right. oh, yeah, I watched that when it first came out. It's like, oh, yeah, I watched that every night. It's like, well, right. motherfucker, what do you have time to do? Well, only well, marathons so they know is Netflix out. marathons. You know, that's so, the only thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, most people, I mean, if you don't have an hour a day for yourself – then you're not living right, man. You, you, no. you, you're not playing the game well. You need yeah. a new strategy. Yeah. Because like, well, you, you need to, if you, you know, if you have more month than money, 
your 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 strategy is not working well. Yeah. Now, everything you do in life, you need a strategy. You're going to go play blackjack. You play with the strategy. Otherwise, you lose handily. You want to you want to go to the grocery store. You need to have a plan of what route you're going to take to get there. You don't just get in the car and keep driving around until you eventually hit it. That's right. Yeah. yeah well, the, Mike, you hit on something that's so important too because. It, look, if you're not willing to do what it takes, then yeah. you're not willing to do what it takes. I don't right. even know why you would even try. There's a, a, <laughs> right. a, a famous triathlete. She said, um, she said, if you don't have time to stretch, then you don't have time to train. Get out of the sport now. Right. You know, right. and it, right. and it's true. I mean, if you're not going to do what it takes, then then what are you doing? I mean, you need. Well, you it's need just people who don't want. On. You know, my, my 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 attitude about goals is people always like to complicate goal acquisition. They go, yeah. you know, people are afraid of success or they're afraid of failure or they're afraid of trying. It's like no, you just don't care about achieving what you think what you're professing. Yeah. You know, if you actually care about achieving a goal, you're gonna blast right through all those fucking obstacles. That's right. It's not and if you important. don't, it's because you don't care. It's simple as that. Yeah, it's not it's not important enough to you. To right. rearrange things in your life to do it, and and I'm I'm just as guilty as anyone uh, on that front, you know. Well, yeah, uh, sure. There's there's plenty of things where I'm thinking, oh, that might be a good idea, and I never do it because right. I don't really care about it. But you know, the <laughs> things I want to get done, I get them done. I think the other mistake people make is they're always talking about stuff they're going to do. So I don't talk about it until you're doing it. Yeah, yeah, Because you're just taking away energy. Like, yeah, man, I'm going to start doing this. Okay, let me know again, when you start it. Again, you get paid. For, <laughs> yeah. You get paid for done. OK, yep. not, not about to going to or any of that, you know, yep. do it. That's where you earn it, man. Right. Right. Absolutely. Right. Again and again and again. All of our UFC fans make it that. Right. What right. else is like, what the hell? Exit that. <laughs> well, and, and, you know, the funny thing is, too, is that in the beginning with with this with this program, the basic prescription. That that aerobic work, I only want thirty minutes a day out of you. That's it. And it as could a, be jogging or a rowing machine, you're, you're staying within a certain intensity. Yeah, yeah. So it's basically moderate intensity. You could talk to someone next to you. You're, the goal is not trying to right. necessarily get the best in, in performance. You're just going for that cardio. I think you you, you make yeah. up a very salient point where. People often don't really understand what cardio is. Right. So they'll be right. saying, "Well, I'm going to go sprinting, and that's going to improve my cardio." Well, it's not going to improve your ability to hike four miles or to to hike up a mountain or go run a marathon. It's going to improve your ability to run 50 yards as fast as possible or 100 yards. Now, there will be some carryover that permeates. Just like if you do really heavy weight training and you get good at three to five reps, that's going to have more carryover to your 15 rep max than the other way around. But if you want to really excel at a 50 rep zone, then you have to train that. Right. Yeah, in the right. real world, it's like this. A sprint, that's going to help you get away from the neighbor's dog when he chases you down the street, okay? Yeah. You, when you go into the mountains and there's a bear after you, not so much. <laughs> not so much. Well, you're, you're screwed no matter what. There. Exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> they can run up trees, too. So you're, you're basically exactly. screwed. <laughs> right. I'll right. just put your arms right out and say, take me. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, and, I, and and we all live under these under all these, all these misperceptions, but it's it's because – no one, you know, the general fitness community is a community that isn't competing for anything. They're not going anywhere. And so the fact that nothing works doesn't matter. It's, it's a personal perception. How many times have you heard these guys who are like, I'm in the best shape of my life? I'm like, compared to what? <laughs> you know? Well, Nate, you the competition can... is, you know, they're trying to compete who can post the best selfie at the gym, you know, on Facebook. Yeah. <laughs> right. Know? Well, right. And a lot of people, a lot of people just work out for the stimulus, right? So they're not even keeping track of right. getting stronger or and any the bragging kind of rights. And the bragging rights. So well, you well, well I always say if you're if you're not training for performance, then you're just spinning your wheels because that's yep. the most accurate way to assess whether you're actually improving. Right. right. I think and there's a difference right there. You, you gotta ask someone like, okay, are you working out or are you training? When you say training to someone, they just a lot of times they kind of get that little side head look like a dog. Like, what are you right. talking about? Like, isn't that the same? It's really not the same. No. Like, though, training is like you have a program. You are like keeping track. You are seeing where how you're progressing or how you're digressing and yeah, there and so forth. Working out, you're just showing up, doing something, and going home and then right. and, and bragging to everybody like I worked out today. You right. know. So most it, time, a lot of people who are training are not bragging about it. You know, it's right. just kind of like Shh, okay. 
The yeah. deadlifts kicked my ass today. You know, so, but why did it kick my ass? I got to fix that next Monday to make sure that doesn't happen again. Or why was I <laughs> off? I need to sleep a little bit. I need to eat a little bit better the next time before I go and work out. So that's what I'm going to train. So that's what you're thinking about when you're training. Your, your, yeah. your, your ass came up way too fast this year. That's exactly. the problem, man. <laughs> 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 you got to like time that ball. bar pull. The only thing missing was a pole and a tip bucket last time I asked him. We saw you pull the bar. The only thing that went up was your ass, man. Come on. You gotta time that shit better. <laughs> I mean, they, they say they say you become what you do consistently. So you know, the, the spearmint and rhino workout, my sincere. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but, that's why every time you see a stripper, dude, let deadlifts. There, there's a reason why. Right? It's just first thing that go up. That's just counterintuitive. I mean, that's just intuitive, rather. <laughs> so what, so what did you do? Like, what, is, isn't this how you do it? It's like, yeah, that's how you do it at work. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how you do it when Nate and I were at uh, right. Treasures, you know? but, but that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different environment. Exactly. Oh, no, it, you know, but, but, you know, here's another thing to, to all of that. You know, there, another of the big questions that I asked myself was, you know, what, in the, what the hell is with this? Uh, you know, oh, I, I want to get fit and, it, you know, fitness is people are always saying, oh, I'm unfit. I got to get fit, but they don't know what that what means. Fit? I, I sought to clarify that because I said, well, you're a human freaking being, right? Okay. So if you're a human being, you're, you're, you're optimized to live out in nature. You're supposed to be doing certain things and there's things that human beings are optimized to do, right? So, you know, what are we meant to do? We're meant to do long distance, uh, and duration walking where we sprint for various reasons. Uh, we do moderate intensity, moder- uh, manual labor, and we do quick, short bursts of heavy lifting, throwing, et cetera. You know, all of that matches up with an energy system. And, you know, when you start to look at the levels of where you should be able to perform to survive in, in the wilderness, there's an actual level that you can extrapolate from that. And it's approximately high school varsity uh, performance. Yeah, and right there, people are going, man, uh, I, should be, I should be a lot better than high school. You know? And a lot of people aren't no. even close to that. A lot of people don't realize that the average the average person who thinks they're fit, if they went to any kind of high school track meet, they'd get their ass handed to them. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the biggest issue is that a lot of people, as they get older, they won't let go of high school. So in their minds, they're still competing at a high school level in their minds. So yeah. every time they come to you, man, but when I was in high school, man, I was benching like 415, man, easily, like 10 sets right. of 10. I'm like, and I'm looking at them like, okay, even now, I don't believe that. Yeah, 10 sets of 10, <laughs> 10, 10, 10 sets of nothing. 10 15, really? You, right. you, look, you, you put the weight on the bar and looked at it for 10 minutes. Man. Right. 10 sets of 10. You know, what's funny is I have these two people in the neighborhood who are talking about, oh, you know, school starting. And these are older. These are people my age or older. And they're going, oh, you know, school starting tomorrow. And I was thinking that they maybe they have kids or something. Yeah. And they, they were saying that because they were they were remembering fondly their high school days. They're like, oh, God, I loved high school. I miss it so much. I was like, you guys are fucking <laughs> like, losers, like, man. Really? So they're like, really? They're like, oh, where'd you go? high school i was like high school i was like my life now is the best it's ever been in my life you know ever since i got in this business and started pursuing the life i always wanted it only went up high school was some of the worst times ever it sucked first of all you live with your parents okay that that that, alone that's it that's the end of the conversation right there (laughs) that that right there sucks stop (laughs) right there you don't don't have any freedom to do anything you you go to a school where you have you're told what to do and i think that's what people miss is that they don't like being adults where you have to take responsibility for all your decisions they miss yeah they miss being living at home with their parents and going to school where you're constantly (laughs) people are constantly telling you what to do all the day all day long so you don't have to think about anything yeah yeah, absolutely. So they, and that was so fun. These are the same people when Nate just described his system. They think, oh, it can't be that simple. But these are the people who are reminiscing on a simple system of living at your parents. Well, all you had to do is keep your room clean and uh-huh. do your homework. And all you had to do is take a crap, eat your food, be in before the streetlights come on, and that was it. Okay, that's simple. But they And they <laughs> missed that. But God forbid if you do something simple with your training, it's like, oh, it can't be that simple. Come yeah. on. <laughs> Yeah, like I do deadlifts. I mean, I go to the gym. I'm doing the same moves every single time, right? Like I go Wednesday, I do deadlifts. I go on Saturday, I do squats. And every once in a while, someone's like, yeah, you know, I noticed that you, you're you always doing deadlifts or squats. I'm like, yeah, they're the two most important exercises. Mm -hmm. Like you don't do any variations. Why? Yeah. What? For what? I go, I I vary the intensity. 
each week. I'm not doing the same reps and weight and volume each week. That's being that's constantly in variable mode. But I, I don't I don't believe in this whole you got to do different exercises otherwise you burn out. Muscle shit. confusion, Gilson, man. Gilson never get, never, <laughs> never yeah, muscle good. confusion, Mike. Come on. There, there's no <laughs> other exercise that's going to get you good at deadlifts, but deadlifts. There's other yeah. things that can help with certain weak points, no doubt about that. Yep. But if you go eight months without doing deadlifts, just working on, on auxiliary moves, I promise you your performance is not going to be better unless you were someone who was just so burned out on it. Right. And that's the reason why. Oh, the mistake you made there is that you got burned out on it. Deadlifting. Is it's such a technical lift that yep. every single time I do it, I, I get better at something. Yeah. Well, here's yeah. my thing. You should have asked, like, first of all, why are you watching me? <laughs> That's what you should have asked. <laughs> like, why are you clocking me? Are you stalking me? Like, you should be focused on what you're doing and not seeing what I do every week on the same day. It's kind of yeah, crazy. Yeah, this, this doesn't happen often. So <laughs> I don't want to make it sound. I don't want to make it sound like every time I go in, someone's asking. It's like every once in a while. Mainly, it's because I'm using heavier weights than everyone there, and that's not because I'm so super strong. It's just because the gym is like a little family gym, so it's unusual to see someone deadlifting five plates there. Yeah. So people yeah. are, people get curious, and I get that. And I, I'm like, look, you're not going to get better at stuff. That you don't do. By doing other <laughs> stuff. If I want to get good at playing the piano, I'm not going to play the mm-hmm. piano piano on Monday and then the guitar on Tuesday and then the drums on Wednesday and then you know the trombone on Thursday. You know, yeah. I'm going to play the piano every day. Well, then this is where no one understands skill. You know, they, they mm-hmm. don't understand it, and and that's where I that's where I will use variation. Is if if someone doesn't have the skill to do the exercise, then I have to find something that's a lower skill level. Right. And progress them up to it, right. and maybe someday I find something that's even more advanced uh, skill level than than the deadlift. Although there isn't anything, well, you I mean, know. like a partial deadlift or a deadlift off blocks for yeah. someone who doesn't have the sure. mobility, the mobility to get in place. Right, and right. You, you go from there. You know, kettlebell yeah. swing is a basic movement. Help load up the posterior chain. Get yep. some mind body connection. Yeah, I mean, there's there's always something you can do. But I think right. I think the mistake a lot of people make, like you know, some of the worst advice I hear. Or read rather in fitness magazines. Oh, you, you'll hear you'll hear some fitness person say, "I never do the same workout twice." <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I know you didn't build that body following that advice with all yeah, that yeah. variability. Uh, come, come on, on man. Yeah. Well, most of the time, these people had a coach, so they don't even know how they train because they delegated <laughs> that to someone else. Like if you asked yeah. someone, like you know, what's your program? They they probably would have to ask their coach because they just yeah. go in and do what they're told to do. Yep. Absolutely. Which is probably the smartest thing they can do because if you look yeah, up to exactly. that, right? <laughs> but I, th- I think a lot of people chase stimulus and then you end up being very mediocre, if even that, at yeah. just a lot of things. And you're not even good, let alone great, at anything. Right. right. And, and, that, and that ensures that your overall performance in whatever the hell it is that you're doing is always marginal. Right. And that's just not acceptable. And. Yeah. And it's not exciting. You know, who's going to get excited to pursue that? Of course, you're going to give up working out. You know, that's the other thing about performance is that, you know, no, no one complains about getting strong and fit too fast. Yeah. Like, man, I'm just, it's just so boring. Every time I go in the gym, I'm just (sighs) lifting more. So boring. I I have to add more plates every week. What the hell, man? No one ever (laughs) complains about things coming too quickly. Most, it's it's usually the opposite. Except women. (laughs) Right, right. (laughs) You you walked right into that one, man. I'm sorry. Yeah, well, you know what? They shouldn't be complaining either because if some someday they're going to be an old fucking hag and nobody's going to be giving any attention. So enjoy enjoy a while it last. All these guys hitting at me all the time. So like, just wait a few years, honey. They're right. not hitting. They're not even going to be looking in your fucking direction. You're going to miss those days. So just enjoy it. Enjoy it right now. Because <laughs> right. like you, you, you talk to some older women, I, if they're if they're honest with you, they're like, oh, you know, I miss getting hit on and guys turning their yep. head when I walk by and all that. You know, they're honest about that shit. They're like, I missed it. I yeah. missed that stuff. So anyway, and, and you know, a lot of women who complain about getting hit on too much, if they go a day or two where they're not, they're like, well, what, there must be something wrong with me. You know, uh, you know maybe yeah. I maybe I, I didn't put on enough makeup today. I, I better get dressed at night and just go walk around and you know, get my confidence back. <laughs> <laughs> if only were that but, easy for guys. <laughs> right. that, that's, that, that, that's okay, ladies. I'm not making fun of any of that. Now, when there's guys who have that attitude, like, man, you know, just women aren't noticing me. It's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> you know, supposed to be a man. <laughs> you know? Is my shirt not tight enough? I need to wear this, I need to wear this medium tonight, man. <laughs> like, you're supposed yeah. to be a man, okay? <laughs> Don't worry about such things. Go, 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 make some stuff happen, and they'll come. They'll come. They'll notice. All right. 
<laughs> no, but I mean, no one, no one complains about stuff happening too quickly. Most people quit because they're not getting results. But yeah. that's why I yeah. think it's so important to have performance as a critical component of your program because when you see progress, whether it's a rep or maybe the bar came off the ground faster. You didn't lift more, but the bar yep. came off faster. It felt easier. You're like yeah. your back didn't feel, wasn't strained. You know, you did a heavy deadlift with the weight you've done before, but it felt easier. You know, that's, that's right. a progression too. Yeah. So I think that's why it's important to always keep track of stuff. You did a set of 15 kettlebell presses and you were able to keep every rep in a straight line as opposed to, you know, the last three reps were sloppy like the last time. You know, that's a form of progression. Oh, even better yet, you recover. Two days later, you're not as sore as you usually are. You know, that's a form of progression. Like, oh, my God, I can actually sit on the toilet and just sit down instead of having to sit there and try to slide into the toilet because my freaking legs are on fire, you know? Your, your, your refraction time wasn't as long as it normally is. You know, that's right. more, you know? <laughs> you know, so I, so I, I think, you know, Charles Poliquin once quoted a study where he said there were guys building chairs, right, in yeah. a factory. And once these guys knew what their number was, in other words, how many chairs they build per hour, once yeah. they knew the number, they improved upon that because there's a right. natural human inclination to improve. Yeah. And you go play cards, you make 200 bucks. Now you're like, okay, I want to make 300 next time. Now, most likely you're probably going to lose that in your underwear, but you know, that's just natural. <laughs> that's just your goal. Yeah. So if you, you lift 500 pounds for four reps, now, now you naturally want to lift 505 or 500 for five reps right so you want to improve upon it and that's a good thing i think you should always be trying to improve it's called evolution that's how we got here (laughs) you know it's the same thing always striving to be a little better than you were last time so right that's the only way we survive otherwise when it's not happening you're declining you're dying and that can happen with your program as well so Mm -hmm. right i think the only problem with being really attached to an outcome is that sometimes it makes people miserable during the process where they're sure. so attached to once I get this, I'm going to feel great. But right now sucks. Well that's, not, well, that's not being in the moment. You know, you're all in the no. future now. And that's, and that right there is another setup. That's worse than, you know, always banking on, well, I, I lifted like this in high school. That's just the same thing when you see the thing like, I can't wait till I lose this 50 pounds. Then I'm <laughs> going to go Cabo. If, I'm going to uh, get wasted. If high wasted. school was your best days in terms of, <laughs> if high school was your strongest days, there's something wrong right there. Oh, yeah. Uh, like, you're a fucking kid in high school. You're not even a grown man yet. I was like, man, when I was 17, I was like, 17? I was like, Mark Phillippe's like, you don't reach your strength peak until you're 40. You know, it takes that many years of hard work until you reach your potential. You just confused yeah, so, so, like, so like if, right if you're if you're if <laughs> you you're just straight, you just pissed on a lot of dreams when you said that. Well, a lot, a lot like, of people look at like, oh, I'm, I, I, I have people like, oh, I'm 30, so I'm not as strong as I used to be. It's like 30. Yeah. I was like, no, you're just not as mentally strong as you used to be. Maybe uh-huh. you're just a total wuss right. right now. That's the problem. So, I mean, yep. I asked Mark, I go, when did you when were you at your peak in terms of just strength and conditioning? He said in his 40s. Yeah. He's been working out since he was a teenager. He wasn't at his peak when he was a senior in high school or that's, that's junior scary. in college. That's scary. It was when he was 40. Yeah. Can you imagine if your sex life was the same way? Like, you know, tomorrow you hit your peak when you were 17. <laughs> Dude, that's sad. Shit, you know, I was a one-minute man when I was 17. That, on, if that's my peak, man. Hey, I shaved 30 my... seconds off my time now, man. <laughs> I win. I was like, that's me at my best. Man. There's going to be a lot of disappointed people in my so life. What's your man time? 30 seconds. Oh, hell, man. <laughs> no, so I mean uh, – yeah, I time. my friend Paul, this guy gets off the bench. This guy's like, yep, can lift just as much as I did when I was in high school. And my friend Paul, powerlifter, he's like, he's like, that's fucking pathetic, man. He's like, you're a grown man now. You should be able to do a lot more than you did when you were in high school. And the guy was all demoralized. <laughs> and I was like, shit, man, I could barely bench 220 when I was in, uh, in high school. You know, when I was 38, I benched 365 for a double. So, I mean, come on, man. People need to have higher standards for themselves. Well, you know, you Louis Simmons is, is in his 60s, still bench. Mentioned, still deadlifting like 600. Like, yeah, everybody knows Westside uses gear and all that, but so right. what? They're still, they're still old and lifting a lot of heavy weights. That's impressive nonetheless. Sylvester Stallone is 70 doing dragon flags. Yeah. Well, Mike, you, you know, you, you said standards, and that's, that's just it. And uh, Sincere asked me a little while ago, he said, what's changed in the last couple of years uh, um, in, in the military environment and all that kind of thing? And it, look, here's the thing, because, you know, I did a lot of research on standards and the standards that the military uses hang out between sixth and ninth grade. That's it. OK, now what they're doing is they're taking seniors and, and college students and holding them to a sixth to ninth grade standard and hoping that they'll actually maintain that. And then 
What's changed is that our society has gotten weaker every freaking year for the last, you know, what, 50 decades, oh, uh, yeah. you know. And so you're, you're dealing with a weaker and weaker and weaker population, and you're holding them to this pathetically horrible standard. And most people, the, their glory days are high school when they were just a little bit above that standard. Right. Well, I, you know, my thing for the general fitness community or anyone out there or the military is this is a bunch of crap. If you're going to – that okay, yeah, let's get you back to freshman year and then sophomore, junior, uh, senior, and then into the college levels because there's no reason not to. Why is it that your physical development and progress has to stop at ninth grade, you know? Why is it, even if you were a, a high school football player, you know, why is it that you allow your life to take you back to sixth grade and then right. you embrace that mediocrity right. with everything that you've got, you know, and then just live in this fantasy world about, you know, well, back when I was in high school and you're just always, <laughs> dude, you're always just, yeah, like, you should, you, you should know? never have, you should never be living in the past anyway, right? It's like whether yeah. it's high school no. or college or like when you're no 40 going, oh, back when I was 30. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, my, so my, my I, last I think, girlfriend, blah, blah, like see how far yeah, that would get yeah. you on a date. Well, like, you know, what's, what's yeah. funny is, what's funny is when guys do that with their current girlfriend, they're always talking about their previous yeah, relationships. Exactly. Yeah. Like I'm sure she wants to hear, would you want to hear about her exes? No. So yeah. shut up. Be with her, man. You dumb fuck. Right. But what's, all these people is like they're trying to climb hand over hand over a greased flagpole, you know, <laughs> yeah. and they just one day I'm going to get up there. No, you're not. Even the best stripper at the Rhino can't do that. <laughs> shit. <laughs> I don't care how strong your thighs are. <laughs> Eat a boost. I don't care how many hundred bills Nate's holding in his hand. Man. <laughs> They're all. No, but you know what? Well, we, we've talked about this on the show. I I don't understand why guys need to be motivated to be strong and powerful. Like yeah. that's something we should tell them that they should actually go after. Yeah, I don't get it's, that. It's, it's, it's just, it it's just astonishes me. Yeah. And you don't have to be the strongest guy in the world. You don't have to deadlift 600 pounds or overhead press 250 or bench press 3. I mean, I'm not – but just just like, a, like a, a certain level of strength. You can do 10 pull-ups. You can do 50 push-ups. You can yeah. go run 100 yards as fast as possible. Right. You can go for a hike without dying. Yeah. You know, just like a basic parameter of fitness. Exactly. But, but the thing is is that nobody is going to get excited about – just a basic level, right? So you're either going to work out hard because you want to reach an excellent level. Yeah. You're not going to work out hard to reach an okay level. Right. And that, but but I still don't understand why people, like men especially, why do you have to be motivated to be strong and powerful, well, man? Should you want to be at those things? I'll even flip it. Even in terms of what we're speaking about as far as the military, Nate, why wouldn't those superiors who are over these guys, you know, and, and, giving them their PT programs and all that, why wouldn't they want them to excel beyond that sixth to ninth grade standard? You know, because here's my thing. This is the guy that's going to, this is going to be the, you know, this is going to be the guy that's going to be protecting me. You know, I kind of yeah. want him to, I, I want him to be, especially if I'm older, you know, and I've been in, in the service a little longer and I'm probably not as fit as this guy right here. I want this guy to really step it up and, you know, this is the guy, this is the youth that I need to help take care of me as well and have my back. Why would I want someone who's mediocre? having my back in this situation. Right. Why would you not raise yeah. those standards? It, it's, I'll tell you, it kind of, there's, there's a lot of, okay, fuck it, I'll say it, bullshit. Yeah, um, I, it. I forget I'm on the show where I can say that. Yeah. <laughs> there's there's a, an unbelievable <laughs> amount of bullshit that's involved with this entire process. And one of the things that I've uncovered is a lot of the way that the government looks at things is a life cycle issue. And the average length of service for the military is six years. So if they can just get a guy and he can – generally do what they want him to do ish and then he's gone in six years and we just start that cycle all over again right. then we don't really have to invest anything in this and they haven't um if you look at the history of it it's horrifying they've literally just gone eh, stuff there it is and i mean no science <laughs> involved nothing i mean christ these people still think vo2 max is a thing you know it, it just it's amazing <laughs> to me it, it, it was vo2 max was invalidated practically the same same moment that it was uh, uh, invented, and um, you know it's, the whole thing is just ridiculous. Well, the whole but, the whole premise is oxygen threshold and stuff like that, right? right? So, what's how how is that how is that flawed? It's it's mm -hmm. it's uptake, and the, the, okay. the issue is is that the the you know you can improve it by about fifteen percent. Now, what that means mm -hmm. that uptake is when you're talking adaptation to exercise, what happens is there is a reduction in the resistance 
of oxygen moving from the blood into the cell. And that resistance is reduced by physical and physiological adaptation about 15%. There is no oxygen deficit at the cellular level, even at max effort. Mm. There is, on the other hand, a problem with being so inefficient and dumping out so much acid into the blood that the body has trouble getting uh, enough of it back to the lungs. So, for example, if you're doing your aerobic conditioning properly, if you when you start, you're looking at uh, approximately 18 liters a minute that you can move to the lungs, which are capable of scrubbing something to the tune of 200 liters a minute. Um, so there's never a deficit in the lungs. As you properly train and the left ventricle of the heart increases in its volume, not thickness, thickness will kill you, in its volume, it can pump more blood with each, um, with each contraction and increase that in elite athletes. You'll get about 35 liters of blood through the lungs in a minute. Um, at the, and at the same time, you're going to be, you know, upwards of a hundred times more efficient at the cellular level if you've been doing your aerobic conditioning properly and increase the mitochondrial density. So, this whole idea that we're going to do cardiovascular training and improve the oxygen uptake of the body is a farce because all you're doing is lowering the resistance to oxygen moving from the blood into the cell. That only improves by about 15%. Mm -hmm. It takes a couple of months to do and then you're done. That's it. You know, that's all you've got. Um, and then the final, you know, the coup de gras on that is, it's different in everyone. They used to set levels and say, hey, between 70 and 80 is a, a, um, a marker of elite athleticism. Well, the problem is you've got all these elite athletes and mountain climbers, guys like Reinhold Messner, first guy to summit the seven tallest mountains in the world without oxygen, and his VO2 max is 47, which you would expect out of, you know, Jared from Subway back before he got thin. So, you know. Well, he, or, or before his, he got pinched for I was about uh, to say, right, child, child, child yeah, yeah. His, his oxygen pathway is about to be clogged with other things. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's, he's going to have a get, hard time he's breathing. He's going to need a fresh foot long pretty soon, okay? <laughs> he has it already. But, uh, but, yeah, there's no deficit in getting oxygen to the cell. Everything... Everything else, you know, you, you've got it, that aerobic capacity is so important because if you do that right by staying in the aerobic heart rate zones, then what you're doing is, is you're radically improving the, uh, the amount of mitochondria that are present in the cell. If you do that, then what mitochondria do is they recycle, um, the waste products. And so you can do a hell of a lot more work and, uh, for a hell of a lot longer and, actually create a lot less waste product. And then on top of that, you can have up to 25% more blood. Um, you'll add another 15% of uh, capillary bed density and all that sort of fun stuff. And so basically you just tuned this whole human machine into this hyper-efficient machine. Or you can spend all your time doing cardio improperly. You can get athlete's heart, which is a thickening of the, of the left ventricle wall, which will kill you. Wow. Um, and then you do not have any of the mitochondria stuff. So you're really, you know, you can get really good at, at doing PT for about 20 minutes and, and then that's it. It's over. You know, yeah, I think, I think, I think, I think numbers are, are, are often overstated. Like for example, with testosterone, people are a couple a couple of strength coaches said, okay, if you're not at 800 total, you're not going to get bigger and stronger. Okay. Okay. Well, first of all, why 800? Why not right. 700 or 900, yeah. right? right? Yeah. You came up at 800. Second of all, second of all, testosterone is very individual to the man. There's yep. guys at 500 who feel fantastic. There's sure. guys at 800 who feel terrible. They need to get up to 900 or, or 1,000 to feel at their best. Yep. And there's guys at 400 who feel great, or if they get up to 500, they feel fantastic. So it's, it's across the board. So what you really want to look at is outcome. So if someone's sex drive is high and they feel good and they're getting stronger – and then they get their blood work done and they're expecting to see this huge number and it's only five, it's only <laughs> right. 550 and they're disappointed. It's like, don't be disappointed. You have the results you wanted. Yeah. Regardless of what the number is. You know, we got a guy, one of our, one of our, one of our listeners and great guys, one of my customers, Raleigh. Mm -hmm. you know, he, Raleigh. yes. <laughs> his, his, his total testosterone was 700 before he started taking aggressive strength, which is already a great number. And it, yeah. but it went up to, it went up to 940 when he was yep. on. 
and his free testosterone went up to 30. Now, me, when I'm on aggressive strength, you know, I'll get up around 650 is the highest, or usually around 550, 650, 550 to 650. I feel great in that range. Yeah. Now, someone would look at Raleigh's numbers and think, man, this guy must be a beast. And Mike's not, someone looking at my numbers without knowing must be like, oh, you know, this guy's healthy, okay. Yep. And I, I could break Raleigh over my kneecap, man. That guy would break <laughs> it half if he tried to in one of my workouts. He'd snap like a twig. Yep. You know? yep. So you can't, just, you can't just look at numbers and think you know reality. Because sure. numbers, numbers are just that. They're just one more, one more way for us to assess certain things. Yeah. Right. So Absolutely. if someone feels like crap and then we look at their blood work and they have no free testosterone and their, their total testosterone is 300, then we know it's not adequate for them. Yeah. We need to raise it up. But it, it could be 600 and we think that's a great number, but it's still not adequate for someone who feels that way. Right. Or there's something else going on. The adrenals are weak or the, yeah. some of the parent hormones, DHEA and pregnenolone may be depleted. You know, who yeah. knows? So we have right. to look at this whole picture. But it's not as simple as, hey, guys, everyone needs to get to this magic number of 800, yep. and then all your dreams will come true. Because <laughs> <You know? laughs> I made that Damn. mistake, too. I was like, shit. I was like, I need to get my T levels up to 800. And then, <laughs> and then it never got there, but I felt great. And I was like, well, shit, why am I chasing this number? I already feel great. So I already got what the outcome I wanted. So, so Mike, if I can go down that rabbit hole for a minute, because sure. that's that's brilliant and it's beautiful. And – you know, the, the thing that people have got to understand is that we as human beings, we are a system composed of thousands of systems and they all have an operating range. And some of those are a little more absolute than others. That's why, like, if you look at, you know, I know you've looked at uh, the, the lab values for various lab tests. I mean, that's why testosterone, for example, it's it's what something like 200 to 900 is is the yeah, it's, it's based on a range of people that have actually gone to get tested. Right. Right. So in other words, let's say 10,000 people who went to get tested and the range was from 250 to 1,000. So like, okay, that must be the range for everybody else. Right. right. Population. But you got to ask yourself, who goes to get tested for testosterone? Someone with a yep. high level who's feeling great? No. Yep. Generally, it's someone who's not feeling that great. So they look at that. Right. So the, so the number – so we, we can't necessarily look at that range as, okay, as long as someone falls in this range, they're okay. Yeah. And that's what most doctors will do. You go to a general practitioner. If you fall within that range – They'll send you home. They'll say, okay, you know, you're in the normal range. Right, you exactly. Go. You could walk in there and say, I've got no sex drive. I'm depressed every day. <laughs> and I'm, I'm having a hard time putting on weights. I'm putting on more fat on my on my legs and my my pecs, my stomach, all signs of estrogen yep. dominance and low testosterone. Yep. Yeah, but you're in the normal range. <laughs> right, next right. Time. And, and they just send you home. And that that's that, – but this is just one example. So every – all of these processes in your body – have a an optimal range and the trick is is finding what that optimal range is now one of the things that i did is i i looked at training in general and i said okay you there's there's a point where there's we didn't stimulate the body enough to create change and this is this is a critical thing to understand is that homeostasis is actually a series of negative feedback loops so it's like having a Jewish mother who's like, ah, oh, what do you need that for? I'm throwing that away. Get rid of this. Oh, you're so messy. You know, and uh, I've known a few, so I'm taking some liberties. The, uh, okay. and, 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 that, and that's a lot of people. Exactly. Not just, not just a lot of ethnicities. Yeah, yeah, not just right. any ethnic group. Yeah, exactly. So, but that's what your body's always doing. So the trick is you've got to stimulate it enough so it goes, ah, okay, I guess you do need that. And it lets you, it, it not only lets you have it, but it'll, it'll build it up a little bit. But then you go past that line and you're doing more damage, you know, and your body just goes into absolute crisis mode. It starts just chucking tissue out the window because it's so destroyed. It can't fix it. Um, all that sort of fun stuff. And so <laughs> yeah, what well, I did, we're, we're seeing that a lot these days too. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> to, ever, to, to a lot of, a lot of chiropractors and ART practitioners delight. Their business has been better than ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. You might've heard of this thing called rhabdo, right? <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but before you even get there, the, you know, osteoarthritis, things like that, even, yeah. even I have, I'm guilty of wearing myself out where, you know, I fucked up my body where I had to take some measures to just rebuild that cartilage and ease back on things and make sure I'm taking systemic enzymes to yeah. manage inflammation from just years and years of just doing things wrong. Right, right. Absolutely. So here's how we train. Everything that we do is governed by force production. And so what that means, let me give you just a quick example. So let's say we go to the gym and um, I'm going to do, I don't know, uh, let's say 225 
uh, for eight reps is, is what I decide I'm going to do um, based on the variables and programming guidelines that we've done. Okay, so first set, I get, um, yeah, I don't know. Let's, let's say first set, I get eight. Let's say the next set, I get 10. Next set, I get 12. The next set, I get nine. Okay, you just had a drop right there. So something's going on. So maybe I slacked off. Now you have a choice here with the way that I train guys. You can do one more set because maybe you were looking at that chick over there and you you weren't in the moment. Okay, but that that, that should that should have helped. (laughs) (laughs) That should have been like man, it's PR time. But but maybe blood was shunted (laughs) elsewhere. I don't know. You know, but but just you can do. I call it a check set. We're just gonna gonna check to see if that wasn't an anomaly or something. You know, so maybe I do one more, and here's what will happen. I'll either I'll either get the same amount, I'll get less, or I'll, I'll bump back up because I really was distracted. 90% of the time, that's it. Like, your next one is six. You're done, okay? And and so I see all these things where people are like, yeah, I'm going to do 10 sets of da-da-da-da. And, and what they're doing is they're just blowing themselves out, right? They've crossed that line where the optimal stimulation has occurred when you hit the peak number of reps you can do. Right. Now, if you're experienced like you and me and sincere and a few other folks, you can push it one or two more sets. We got some tricks in there and then you recover real carefully. But otherwise I just cap it right there. Boom. You're done. Um, yeah, my attitude is yeah. when in doubt, leave it alone. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's, when it's, in doubt. It's not going to get better. It's, you yeah. start opening it up for things just to go really wrong. You right. Know, you could have just like You barely did three on that third. So you're like, okay, yeah. let me do another one. It's like, no, 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 no. 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 You barely. It's <laughs> like, it's like you went and played cards and you barely won. You know, you're, you're, you've been playing for hours. You were down. You're finally back up a little bit. And just now you just said, okay, just let me play more. a little bit longer and let me see if I can make a big surplus. Like, right. yeah, most no. likely at this stage of the game, you're going to lose what you just won back. So just walk out the door. Walk yep. Out. So what you've day. done there is you've set yourself up for success in recovery. Right. And yeah. here's the other thing that I do that I've never seen anyone else do, but it's the results are fabulous. In running or sprinting, I do the same exact thing. Or even walking. If people are walking, you 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 keep track of your pace. And mm-hmm. so figure it out by kilometer at what point or per sprint, say you're doing hundred meter sprints and you drop, say, you know, three or four tenths of a second, walk away, you're done. Do yeah, not sometimes, sometimes on sprinting, you, you have a plan of I'm going to do 10 sets of 50 yard dashes. And by the seventh set, you're basically I mean, you think you're sprinting, but everyone else thinks you're jogging. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, at that point, <laughs> at that point, you should have stopped a sprint or two before that. But you definitely want to stop there. Yeah. So I, I say, look, if you drop, say, four tenths of a second, walk, go away. You're right. done. Um, right. If your pace starts to drop after, say, five kilometers of walking or three kilometers of running, and it starts to drop, you're done. Stop. Go home. Because everything after that is fatigue that yeah. is is a level of fatigue that your body really isn't going it's, to – it's going to be more of a detriment for your body to try to recover from what you're doing from this moment forward than it is to just get better and come back stronger the next time. Right. Now, so, is there ever a time, Nate, where sometimes you actually want that to happen? So just for for mental toughness? Every now, yeah. no, but hold on. For more conditioned guys, more mentally trained guys like ourselves, I'm not talking. I'm not trying to give some other people a pass who are like, yeah, mental toughness. Yeah, I got to kick my own ass, blah blah. Consistently, <laughs> no, no. Every now and then, in the mix, like you know what, I'm I'm slacking off. Now, can can you keep going? Well, let's see. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, if you if you, I would say once if if you did say one of those types of workouts every three months. Yeah. I, I think you could get away with it. I mean, and, and eventually that becomes instinctive mm-hmm. where you say today's the day and you just do something that looks like a horror movie <laughs> and, you know, off you go. Um, and, and that's OK. You know, it, it's a shock principle thing. Um, and I think that it's a little bit more common within um, if, if you're doing more of the general fitness thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Every couple of months, man, do something to just kick yourself in the teeth for a minute and then but do it on Friday and recover really well, you know, so that you can come back the next week and, and, and not suffer any detrimental effects. When it comes to the longer term programs, like I've got one that, uh, I've got a program that we do. It's about six months long for guys that are trying to go to, uh, Joint Special Operations Command or the SAS, or, you know, something like that. And when it comes to that program, 
um, or, or, or a number of the programs that we run, the cumulative, um, the, the cumulative stress makes it so that you can't afford to do that mm-hmm. because you're, you're kind of riding the edge and you're riding it for a long time. And so, for example, I think it's a uh, week 13 of that particular program is a, a 24 hour, uh, ruck march with 77 pounds in your pack. And I mean, it is absolutely brutal. I mean, by the time guys get to week 10, see, this is the funny thing. Week, week one through four, they're going, are you kidding? This, this is retarded. I, I'm not even, I'm not even breaking a sweat here. Week 10, they're like, I don't think I can finish this. <laughs> the guys that get yeah. to week 13 have chosen a new religion, you know? <laughs> and I mean, it's, but, but this is the progression that it takes. It's sort of, it, it, now that's on a large scale. Every energy system you have, every fundamental movement pattern that you have, you're you're working to this level. Um, it, but it's it's similar to for people that aren't familiar with that type of training. Take that old that old uh, squat routine where you you found your one rep max. You you went to your fifty rep max and you did what was it five set or uh, ten sets of five, right? Mm-hmm. So the first couple workouts you're like, <laughs> whatever, dude. By week eight, you're changing your religion by week or uh, workout eight. You know, I mean, you're just like, I, I can't do this. Yeah, that's where a lot of, a lot of, people, happens, don't, a lot of yeah. people don't understand periodization or progression yeah. where a periodized, periodized program, the first couple of weeks are generally going to be easy. And the mistake people make there is go, well, this is too easy, so let me ramp it up. Yeah. And then the weeks that are supposed to be difficult are even more difficult now yep. because you didn't progress yeah, in the right. way the program was laid out. And this is what I was talking about earlier is that – a lot of times people will say that program didn't work. But then you look at <laughs> what they did. I go, no, no, no. I mean, you, you put your max as 550 on the deadlift and you've never even done 495 before. It's right. like, where did you get that number? Right. And you're wondering why it didn't work out. I mean, come <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and that workout's just a great example of, you know, it's like, go ahead. Uh, well, and, and what you do is you add, uh, well, you add five pounds every, every workout that you do for a total of 16 workouts. Right. And, and so, but I mean, that's just a great microcosm of that concept because people are like, Oh, screw this. I'm adding 10 pounds. Yeah. Now this is what more like it. And they never get past workout five. Right. They never get past it because they're done. Burnt it takes a lot of discipline. It takes a lot yeah. of discipline. You got to last long enough to hit the turning point. Yeah, exactly. And the turning point is where the real gains come. But if you screw up everything before the turning point, yep. there isn't going to be a turning point for the better. <laughs> yeah. For the worse. Right. right. And for guys that have that have been there, they know that that's how you got to play the game. That's why guys that were collegiate athletes usually are always pretty good to go. Um, but guys that were, say, high school athletes or never were an athlete. Well, m- most people max out every workout, right? I mean, that's what I see well, in the gym. People go in there and they try to, hit, they, they try to, to hit failure. failure. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everything's to failure. You just did the first set to failure. Now you're going to do the second set to failure, which is right. going to be considerably less than the first because you already hit that to failure. Yeah. It's well, some, a lot of workouts would just be skill workouts. You're working on speed. You're working on technique. You're working on right. power, right? Those when, you, you can never do enough of that. Yeah, when it comes to maxing out, I mean, in a year, in one year, the Soviets always said that you should never do anything. Uh, you should never do more than 20% of your training should be above 70 to 80% of one rep max. Mm. And they thought the Finns were crazy because they would do like 30% of their work would be over 80% one rep max. You know, they were like, well, you know, they, they do it. We're not convinced it works. You know, when, when you read it, this is how they wrote it. You know, like, ah, be cautious of those Finns. You know, they're untrustworthy. And, you know, <laughs> but, the, but the point is, is that you, why the hell are you going heavier than that more than 20% of the entire year? You know, you shouldn't. Right. It's like everything you did before is what allows you to do that. But yeah. doing that doesn't allow you to do more of that. You're just depleting yourself. Right. So like, but by under 90%, you're getting stronger. If you go over 90%, now you're seeing if you're stronger, but you're right. not necessarily getting better in that threshold. That's right. I mean, think about it like this. How many, how many Olympic gold medal sprinters or even gold medal qualifying sprinters uh, got there because 80% of their work was sprinting as fast as they could? <laughs> right. Yeah, right. None, you know, <laughs> and never will be. You know, that's with steroids, you know. <laughs> yeah, what's that saying? Only average people peak every time? You know, well, or something, something like that. There you go. 
and 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 their peak is very personal to them. You know, by <laughs> by percentage of world record, I'm just not impressed. You know, I mean, well, I, some people they, that, let's say their goal, let's say they're let's say they like pressing two seventy pound kettlebells five times, mm-hmm. and they will have to if they want to get up to ten times. Now they have to go to a lighter set of kettlebells and work yep. on technique and all that, or they can just keep pressing two seventies five times every single workout, get the stimulus, and then go on forever. Yeah, people who want to get really strong though are going to say, okay, let me do sets of three, or let me go drop down to twenty eight and do sets of seven or eight or more, and just really dial down this technique, dial it in. Yeah, and then and then I'll be able to do it ten times or more. But that takes a discipline. You have right. to give up that pleasure of pressing it five times now, so that in the long run you can do two, three times, four times more than that. Right, and so that right there, I, I hope everyone goes back and, and records that and writes that down because that's what you just described is the difference between training or working out because to train for a goal, you have to do that. If I'm just working out, doesn't matter what I do as long as I'm working out. It's like like running, it's like running a business and you think every single month, successive month should be better than the last. Right. That's totally (laughs) delusional. Right. So I go, Okay, if I made thirty thousand dollars last month, I have to make thirty five this month, and then forty next month, and then forty five, and then fifty, and then, and then yeah. and just keep going in this ascension. It's like no, you're gonna have you're gonna have months where it's negative territory. I've had months where it's like negative ten thousand bucks because like all these expenses converge at the yeah. same time, and you had to pay it all. And right. then the next month is like this huge surplus, right? It just goes back and forth. Like anyone who runs a business knows what I'm talking about. It's yeah. not. It's not like a salary at a job where you just get this check all the time. The income is different. Every single month is different. Yep. Pretty yep. much throughout the year, right? And, and you're going to be delusional if you think that it's oh, like every month is going to be better than the last forever. So why should every workout be better than the last forever? Right. You're going right. to you're going to go through different stages. Like in the long run, yeah, you're going to be stronger. Just like in the in the long run, the stock market goes up. Yep. But it may not go up today or tomorrow or next month or even we next saw, year. But we five saw years that last now. week, you know, went down yeah. a thousand points. Uh, People panic. Like, no, nah, just sit your ass down. I hold on. <laughs> this I, happened before. I, yeah, I you, think you shouldn't even you shouldn't even be looking. Today. Exactly. Like, like Why are you looking? It's supposed to be long. Yeah, these people look at the market. People look at the market every morning, and then oh. I mean, it's like all your money's in an account, and you can't touch till you're 65, and then you're looking at the market every day. So you can't touch the money anyway. You're just looking for stress. You no, know, not without penalty anyway. Yeah. Exactly. Right. Right. Yeah. But you know, even like in uh, even a game like blackjack, right? There's, you know, if you're using an adequate strategy, a lot of times you're just sitting there and. There's, is, the cards are not good. The cards are not good. The cards are not good. And then finally, the cards start getting good. You increase your bet. You ride that sucker. Yep. A lot of times when the cards do get good, you're still losing. So that's the nature of the game. But you got to keep right. betting high because the cards are good. And then you start winning. You make it back, et cetera. Now, it doesn't mean that every time you go out, you're going to win. You're going to go out. You're going to lose some. You're going to do everything right, and you're going to lose. You're going to get your ass handed to you. Yep. There's going to be other times where you go out and you can't lose. You're just every hand you're just winning. You're winning. Mm-hmm. You're winning. But you're playing the exact same strategy each time. You're playing a smart game. Yeah. So training is going to be the same way. There's going to be days you go to the gym. You're not stronger than other days, but you're doing the right things. Mm-hmm. Then the next time you go, you're going to be you're going to feel really strong. But I think the mistake some people make is they go through a phase. Let's say it's like a three week window where every time you go work out, you feel stronger. Yeah. And then they start calculating in their mind where they're going to be in six months <laughs> based on how they're doing. And they, you know, like, man, I just did that for two reps. You know, by the end of the year, I'll be doing it for 10. It's right. Like, no, 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 buddy. That's not how it works. Using that, what are you going to do in five years strategy to your training? <laughs> hey, what do you see yourself in five years? Well, hopefully alive. That's all I'm <laughs> shooting for. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I'm Bobby? talking to you listening to those dumbass questions. That's where. <laughs> no, it's not like that whole thing. Silly story of oh you know, you know Hercules got strong because he he would he would lift a baby calf overhead and then every day he lifted it overhead so when it became uh, a bull he still lifted overhead you know? yeah, right that's right. why it's called it's Greek like, no, mythology no. Okay. Like, no, <laughs> it's a story like, man it, it sounds reasonable right but right. it's just it just doesn't work that way you know? no no. What's, well, that, it, what's that? What's that? What's that? Cap hit a growth spurt, became a bull. Forget <laughs> it. Went from like fifty pounds to like two hundred in a week, and then it went to like four hundred. Forget it. You're not lifting that overhead. Nope. <laughs> as as a former farmer, I can assure you of that. Yeah, that's. Uh, good God, they get big, then they get mean, and then that's the end of it. You got to ship them for beef. So, <laughs> but, but it's it. Oh, but uh, but but I, I just think people have these really ridiculous expectations they just don't understand the nature of not just of of working out how you how you make progress but just anything business yeah. stock market 
any kind of strategy. It's, it's not going to be this linear ascension. It's about, yeah. Yeah, even relationships. Hey, on the first date, don't start talking to me about a wedding. You're like, really? <laughs> like, oh, my God, I, just, I want this, and we want this many kids. Like, wait a minute. I just want you – I just want to know, are we splitting the tab, or, you know, is this like a real thing? I mean, what are we doing here? Well, 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 one thing's for sure. No no guy is doing that. No, no. Man, if he <laughs> that, is – That's a, that's a now, woman thing. Like, now, let no me tell you, if a guy is doing that, day. women run. Something That dude's got issues. Okay? I mean, a guy needs to yeah. run, too, if a woman's doing that. Oh, <laughs> right. That's way right. too much information exactly. for even the 10th date, man. Give it some time. <laughs> it's, like, it's, like, it's like creating a garden. Okay? You're not going to force it to grow overnight. You have yeah. to do all the right things, and then it matures over time. Yep. So people, people just don't have any patience, man. They just want to rush everything. I mean, well, people the, get into the fitness business, and they're going, well, they you know, my goal, my goal is, yeah, exactly. My goal is to make six figures this year. I was like, it's your first year in the business, can motherfucker. You, you should right. be can, happy can you if make, you're still in business by the end of the year. You need to make six dollars today first. How about that? <laughs> right. you know? let's, let's have a goal of making fifty bucks first. <laughs> okay. Know, they all think that, and they all think that they're well, a they've special been sold snowflake. That. You know, well, what's so magical about six figures anyway? So if you make yeah. sixty-five, that sucks. Yeah, well, that's you, make six, <laughs> you make sixty five thousand dollars a year doing what you love. That's a failure because it's not six figures. Well, yeah, that, that's what they've been sold. Then yeah. you know this is what you should be. If you're in this industry, especially fitness, you should be making six figures like me. Like he's only making six figures because you dumbasses have bought a ticket to this seminar that he's teaching right now, <laughs> and, and you're buying into his mastermind program. A, he, he made a course on how to make six figures, exactly. and he's making six figures selling that course to you. Exactly, because <laughs> yeah. at the end at the end of the lecture, he's going to have you all signing up for his coaching program, and he's only, been a, and only. Guys, the 20 people, trainer only for 20. 10 years. <laughs> That's what all those guys do. It's guy, like, guy, guy hasn't been a trainer for 10 years, and he's telling you how to make guys. figures as a trainer. Yeah. It's like if he can, if he was making so much money as a trainer, he'd still be a trainer. Right. Well, but hell, if he's making so much money as a trainer, then he should go hire one to coach him and keep his ass in shape. Because all I see is your gut sticking out, and you're trying to tell me how I can make this amount of money as being a trainer. Like, there's, 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 no, there's no magic plan either. I mean, I have an online course where I share all these strategies, but I, I make a point of saying just because it worked for me doesn't mean it's going to work for you. You're going to have to take these larger concepts and figure out your own plan, right. yep. figure out your own road. You know, no one I didn't I didn't just take a bunch of stuff that other people did before me and do the same exact thing. Right. Yeah. I took I, I looked at principles and I go, OK, that makes sense. A lot of people that are successful are doing workshops. They're writing books. They're writing articles for magazines. They're doing videos. That makes sense. So I'm going to do that in my own way. But how I got those things is going to be different than how they got them. Exactly. Yep. There are going to be things that you're going to be stronger at that they're not. You know, some people, they shouldn't be in front of a camera and making videos. You know, some people have a face for radio. Some people are in front of a camera and they think it's a good idea to eat bugs. Yeah, they're great ideas. I'm going to eat bugs on camera and record this, but let people see it. (laughs) So I mean, yeah, exactly. Some people shouldn't be in front of cameras. Oh man, a lot of people shouldn't be. But 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 I I think a lot of people think that they can somehow avoid suffering on their way to success. That's the biggest mistake right there. If I could just avoid hard work and suffering, I want to get everything I want, but I don't want to have to work hard or suffer. Right. That's yeah. why all these seminars exist yeah. because they're trying to sell you some bullshit on here's how you avoid those things to get what you want. And the reality should be if you really want it, you're not going to care about doing those things yeah. to get it. Exactly. Yeah. That's the real problem is that you don't really care about the goals. Otherwise, the suffering and the hard work, you'd be, you'd be so busy doing shit, you're not worried about that. Let's be honest, yeah. man. The only time you're going to suffer while you're doing this type of stuff and you really see that you're suffering is because you're probably doing something that you don't give a shit about. Yep. So that's the thing about it. When you're doing something that you're passionate about, and it's like, you know what, man? Hey, this is part of the game. You actually enjoy it because it's, yeah. it's building that story because everybody wants to have that story at the end of the day. Like, look, man, somebody, this was not easy. And here's this is what I had to go through. And you share that story. <laughs> you know, true. Nobody yeah. sits there like, oh, can't, man. Can't wait to tell those Oh, stories. my God. Exactly. <laughs> it's like you're going through being like, you know, someday I'm going to be able to talk about this shit. So I exactly. can't wait. <laughs> Well, I mean, for, I mean, an example of you suffering sincere is trying to teach a, a chick how to smoke a cigar. And then you finally realize that, <laughs> why am I doing this? Exactly. I don't want to do this. <laughs> and you know, one thing about it, through the whole thing, I learned. It's like, you know what? You can't teach a chick how to smoke a cigar. And Sarah, Sarah had the same facial expression that Saeed in Oz had when Adi Bisi said, I don't want to kill you. I want to kiss you. <laughs> same expression Saeed had is what Sincere had. When this chick fucking took one puff and then left for the night. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> but that's but guys, that's the journey. You yeah. know, that's that all that suffering is is also learning. You know, and you've yeah. got to learn. There's so many lessons you've got to learn if if you're going to be in the training or coaching business or whatever it is. 
there's so much that you've got to learn. It, well, you I, want to do anything impressive, whatever it is. You well, what, yeah, have to deal with it. yeah. If, if, if you're going to, yeah. If, I mean, if you yourself are going to have performance as a coach, any meaningful results that, you know, something that you would actually be proud of. I mean, it takes a solid 10 years just to figure out what the heck you're doing in the first place. I mean, right. to, to get where I am with, with my head wrapped around this entire body of science, it's been a 15 year journey. And every time I, I actually got told to stop doing research, um, to, uh, to just slow the roll because so many people can't keep up at this point. But the, um, but the thing is, is that every time I open, you know, Mel Sif's books or Tudor Bompa or something like that, Zasiorski, I see something new because I had to come up to a certain level of knowledge and understanding in order to pick up what they're putting down. Right. right you know, right. I mean, 15 years ago, super training was, it was, you know, you'd go through it and you go, oh yeah, I, that's cool, I guess. That yeah, that seems pretty you, neat. You don't even know what you know? you're reading. Yeah, exactly. time, I look through it now. Half the time, I'm like, "What's he talking about here, man?" This right. I was like, "Is this physics or uh, calculus? What the right. hell is this?" Well, right. And so at this point, I I now understand that. Like, I had to teach myself some applied math and and uh, a bunch of other crap. And now when I look in those books, I go, "Oh yeah, exactly." I mean, yeah, obviously, clearly. So that's what this means. And da da da. But I mean. Holy crap, it took me 15 years to get there, and I can't turn around and explain it to someone that doesn't understand uh, anything about anything. You just have to go right. do the thing. Okay. And they do the thing. Now, maybe in 15 years, I can tell them half of that, but right now, they're not there. They just need to do the thing, you know? And it, it's if you decide you're going to try to shortcut it by being, you know, I'm going to go to this seminar and get with this guy and well, you're never going to amount to Jack because you don't know anything about anything. And just because you're great at marketing, guess what? All you're ever going to do is make soccer moms sweat a little bit and they're going to leave because you're an idiot. So, <laughs> I mean, next. Or, or they're going to stick around because you're a good listener. You listen to all their problems. <laughs> you <know>? <laughs> <laughs> they, haven't, they haven't made any meaningful progress in five years, but you're a good listener. So you, that's your hustle. You managed to get them to stick around a bit. Yeah, so you created a social <laughs> club. They're paying you. To, you might as well just <laughs> bonbons with them. You know, I mean, come on. <laughs> so, <laughs> that drives me nuts. Everything is skill and 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 skill and learning and education. It's all it's all there, you know. And if you're not willing to do the work, then what what the hell are you doing? You know. <laughs> Go go buy some bonbons. Bonbons. Bon 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 they bon bon still bon sell those things. I always, somebody brought that up like a couple of weeks ago. I said, they still I think make I did. Those? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, really? <laughs> Who still? What woman still sitting around eating bonbons? Like seriously, you put some real chocolate woman. What's wrong with you? Yeah, there, there, there's way better high cal calorie junk food than that. Exactly. Like, if you want to get fat, there's like, way more is, fun ways like, to get fat than bonbons. Like, what is Wait. her name? Jaja? What the hell? Who still does that? Come on. <laughs> Well, hey, man, great having you on the show. It's been a while. Good catching up. Yeah. Too. Where can people find out more about your book and all the things you're working on? Yeah, absolutely. Um, just go to uh, Riker Performance. That's spelled R-I-K-R performance.com. And um, you'll see all the all the stuff we're doing. We're trying to uh, trying to break down the Pentagon's walls here with a bunch of different initiatives. And uh, we're launching some uh, online training for guys that are trying to go into special operations in the military. So that's going to be pretty awesome, and uh, that's that's all there. So, like I said, RikerPerformance.com. Awesome, sounds great, buddy. Thanks again, awesome. man. You have a great one. We'll we'll get you back. We'll get you again back soon. Cool. We'll get you back on the show. Yeah, soon. we got to talk, talk about, about we got to talk about CrossFit and um, competitive shooting now. Yeah, yeah we got we got to talk about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, because you know you don't work out hard enough before you go out and get attacked by someone while you're in the parking lot. You know, you gotta get your heart rate up first. I hate it when I'm doing Fran and I'm assaulted. Exactly. I hate it. <laughs> like, dude, you gonna mug me now in the middle of my Fran time? I gotta get a PR today, bro. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. That'll be great. That'll be great. Awesome. Definitely. Cool. All right, man. You have a good okay, one. Nate. Thanks, Take Mike. Care. Thanks, sincere. Later, bro. Take, Take care. care, everyone. All right. So good friend, Nate Morrison. You make sure to check out his stuff. And folks, just put his name in Google if you have a hard time remembering any websites or anything like that. Yeah. I always laugh when people say, hey, where can I find out more info about this okay. aggressive First strength testosterone notes. booster? <laughs> I was like, aggressive strength testosterone booster. Google so you remember it. the name of it, but you didn't think to put it in Google. <laughs> you know? It's like Boss Rudin with the O2 trainer. Hey, where can I buy the O2 trainer? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh...
Google, Yahoo, any search engine, put it in there, bam, like oh, yeah. magic. It'll show up probably on the first or two websites on the page. <laughs> exactly. Even Janky Bing might actually work for you for once. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, in man. the meantime, use that coupon code LLA. Let's get 10% off the best nutrition supplements around. I got my testosterone booster, make you feel like a man, even if you're a woman. I got my restore side. <laughs> 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 oh, you may God. look like a man too. Just kidding. You're not gonna, you're not gonna grow a beard on it. Now, my Restore Zyme, which everybody can take, mitigate that inflammation, improve your recovery time. Recovery oil gets best sleep your get best get, get the best sleep of your life, and finally, your my wife? estrogen blocker. <laughs> easy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. The best sleep of your wife. Okay. Get, get the sleep. Get the best sleep with your wife. <laughs> take the testosterone hey, booster hey, first, and then the recovery oil. Hey, it may happen. <laughs> and then estrogen blockers, so that you quit watching those reality TV show marathons and. And you're fucking your. You see some kind of discharge coming out of your nipples. It's, it might be a little bit too late. <laughs> oh, oh damn, right. dude! That was anyway, hilarious. folks, you know the deal. LLA, ten percent off the best nutrition supplements. And how about with you, man? All right, just go to newwarriortraining.com. Use the same coupon code, man, and ten percent off anything you can buy over there. And also head over to patreoncom slash show. Excuse me, LLA podcast, and become a monthly supporter of the show. And that'll help us keep the show going and growing and bringing great guests on like our boy Nate today. And last but not least, head over to iTunes, Stitchers, TuneIn, all those good things. Rate us, review us, share the episode, let the world know, get on social media, shout it out from the mountaintop. All right. Do all that. Let the world know about the LLA show, man. All right. That's what we're going to do. We're done. All right. Take care, everyone. See ya. Take care.